Hey, it's Malia White. I'm on the Hollywood Raw podcast, and we're talking about all the adventures on my ship and what really happened in my accident. What's up, our Hollywood Raw fam? Thank you for joining us on our YouTube page. Yeah, subscribe to the page, tap the bell, leave a comment, show us some love, and we'll show it to you right back. I mean, we got to pay our bills somehow. <laughs> Yeah, we got a fun guest today. This is someone we've been trying to get on the show for a long time. Uh, but they, again, they've been a hard person to find because you never know where they're at in the world. Dax, tell us about our guest today. Yes, yeah, so we got Malia White on. Star, 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 star of uh, Below Deck Mediterranean. Hi, Malia. Malia, thank you for coming on the podcast. Where, where are you now right now? Where are you? Uh, yeah, I'm currently in France. I'm in La Ciota in a shipyard on my boat. I just love that. Like, just I'm just <laughs> chilling in a shipyard. No big deal here. Is, are the accommodations nice in a shipyard? I, I have no idea. I mean, it looks nice. You got like a nice room going there. Yeah, well, because my boat's getting a paint job, we get to live in little apartments. So that's kind of nice. We get a little break from uh, bug life. <laughs> And how long, so, how long of a break do you get? Because it seems like when you watch the show, you guys are constantly out doing stuff. But like, in reality, how long do you guys get breaks in between these voyages? <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said break. What I mean is we get to stay in apartments. But uh, the shipyard is actually the busiest time for us. It's when we're doing all the big projects on the boat, like, uh, you know, repainting, fixing things that are broken throughout the season. But um, we have like a quick turnaround for this one. So a couple months and then we'll the boat will cross the Atlantic and go back to the Caribbean and do a whole Caribbean season. <laughs> That's amazing. amazing. So when is the last time you've been home? Uh, well, fortunately for me, I got in a scooter accident. So I got to go home a couple weeks ago. <laughs> we will. I do. But, I, I have so many questions about the scooter accident, but we're going to, we're yeah. going to wait on those. Cause I feel like that deserves <laughs> some, some serious time, but I want to take people back, you know, to kind of how you even landed on the show. Like give us a little brief history of how you are, where you're at today. Yeah, it's a pretty shocking story. I mean, I was, I had graduated college from University of Colorado, Boulder, and I didn't yeah. really know. Yeah, I'm a buff. <laughs> um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went backpacking and I kind of, I worked in Hawaii for a bit as a dive instructor. And yeah, so then I, my last backpacking trip, I came home and my best friend and I were day drinking and we're like, right what should we do with our lives? Like, do we really want to move back to Colorado and do like the nine to five thing? Or, you know, what should we do? And we just applied for like a bunch of reality TV shows, like Big Brother and like The Amazing Race and whatever else. And I got a call back from Below Deck and they're like, do you want to come on the show? And da 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 And it didn't work out the first season, but then it worked out the second season and the rest is history. <laughs> Can you That's walk us through? pretty cool. Sorry, I think we have a bit of delay, but can you walk us through what the audition process is like to get on a show? Because people don't, I don't think, realize what that's like. You know, you you get a call back, but then what happens? Yeah, I mean, I got a call back and then it was like a series of interviews on the phone and sending pictures and doing like, you know, filling out questionnaires like what, what are your life? What are your hobbies? What do you do? Um, and then you make it to a series of like video interviews and see how you do on camera. And, you know, they kind of, I think that's when they're trying to sense like your personality, if you're going to be like the crazy one or whatever else. And, uh, and then eventually I made it to like the final few people in the first season, they had chosen someone else. So then they called me and they're like, Hey, can we put you through this whole process again and see if you make it? And, um, then I did for the second one. So from the time you started to the time you got on the show, how long was that period of time for like the, the interview process to see if you're a good candidate, if you'd be a good fit on the show? To be honest, I don't remember like specifics with timeline, but I think it, um, I think it's just like a couple months. It's, and then at the time I had moved back to Colorado, I was working in like a corporate desk job and they called me and they were like, Hey, we put you through again. 
and you've actually made it. So if you want to go, you've got to like pack your bags and leave in like a week. <laughs> it's like, great. Wow. And did you know <laughs> anything it. about what it's like working on a yacht or you're just like, well, let's just try it? Yeah, no, but Below Deck was my very first yacht that I worked on. And um, I, you know, I'd worked on dive boats, but it's not comparable at all. And so I remember like the day before, like the week before I was Googling, like what is the bow and the stern and the port and starboard and <laughs> like ship. I was like Googling like yacht terms and all this and I just kind of winged it. So you didn't need any experience prior to work on Below Deck. They did have to send me to get my STCW, which is like your safety training, which is like a five day course that you do. Everyone that works on these yachts has to have it. Um, but that that was it. And, you know, they knew that I had dive boat background. Like I wasn't a newbie to working on a boat, but I was definitely green, green, green when it came to yachting. So yeah. now, now looking back, you know, obviously you've been doing the show for a little bit. Are you happy with the decision? Like, how has it changed your life? Are you enjoying this new fandom being part of the Bravo family? I am. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. Then I decided to get into yachting and I didn't know kind of what the, sh like the name that the show has in yachting. Um, not all yachties are fans of the show. You know, it's kind of like taboo to do it. Um, so they were like, oh, well, good luck getting a real job, you know, but I haven't had any trouble in the industry and I absolutely love filming it. So yeah, I'm definitely happy. I, I and, you, and you're getting your captain's license, right? Is that accurate? Yes. I hold a captain's license. Yeah. But I'm Dang. upgrading. Yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. huge from never being on a yacht to now <laughs> holding a captain's license. That's a pretty big accomplishment. So congratulations with that. Thank you. Yeah, it's crazy how much this show has like changed my life and kind of my career trajectory. I, you know, I was working a normal desk job in Colorado and now I'm trying to be a captain on a super yacht. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so how, do you, this is a dumb question. Do you get seasick often? I don't know, but there are crew members that do, you know? And what do you do? Like, what's the best protocol if you do get seasick or how do you prevent it? Pretend like you're not seasick. <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, we, you know, as some group before we go on like a passage, especially if you know it's going to be rough, you take like phoning or stuff that's like non drowsy. Um, but otherwise, once you get seasick, you kind of just got to power through it. Uh, so, the worst seasick's the terrible. I hate, I hate seasick. It's, I hate it. So yeah. bad. I, so thinking back to your, your captain's license, once you have that, is there like, is there any reason that you couldn't do your own spinoff, your own show for, for Below Deck? Because I, I feel like that's kind of, it's centered around obviously Captain Sandy. So is there any chance of you doing your own Below Deck spinoff now that you have your license? Um, like me being a captain on the show, is that what you mean? Or yeah, my own do, doing your own spinoff of it. They, they give you your own <laughs> season and it's not Mediterranean. It's the Baltic Sea. I don't, I don't know my seas, so I'm just throwing shit out there. But, <laughs> you know, is there a chance of that? Hopefully, yeah, I think there could be. Um, I got to get my upgrade on my license, but definitely, yeah. That's so cool. Captain Malia. <laughs> captain so, Malia well, season. If you are a captain, what what are the roles of the captain? Like, what does their job entail exactly? Captain wears a lot of hats, you know. it's A lot of captains will tell you, like, the easiest part about being captain is driving the boat. Um, if you think about it, the captain's kind of like the CEO of the company. You know, they – and their HR. They've got – you know, they're the captain of the ship. All the crew have to come to them for, you know, any reasons that they may need. You know, he, he or she is in control of every department on the boat. So they've got to do a lot, a lot of paperwork. They have to deal with the owners, the management company, the crew. So they're very busy people. <laughs> and you had mentioned earlier that you said people would kind of look down on going on below deck if they're in the yachting industry correct so do you feel that this show has i'm assuming helped your career and you know you're, you've got your license but do you feel that you're more in demand in the yachting space uh i wouldn't say more in demand i would say i'm definitely recognized a lot more than i normally would have been probably <laughs> 
Um, but I think the, the like, you know, the narrative around being on below deck is kind of changing. I think crew, a lot of crew have done it now. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of us have had positive experiences. So I think that's a good thing. So when someone, how does someone get a job as in crew for a yacht? Like what is, is this, what's their background or is this something like they just kind of fall in? Well, I think a big misconception about like yacht crew is that we want a bunch of these like backpacker mentality where people come and they do yachting for a little bit, but it's not a career. Um, yachting, especially on the deck side, is very much a career. I mean, if you think about it, we spend a lot of money to get these licenses and these tickets and we go to we go back to school. Like, <laughs> I've pretty much done my college degree again, you know. Um, so to become crew, you got to get some training first, do your SDCW and depending on which department you're going into, like engineering and deck, you've got a lot of schooling ahead of you. And then, you know, interior as well, you've got to have a lot of experience and customer service and they've got to do training as well. So, um, yeah, it's, you, you kind of go get your basic training and then you go dock walk or try to find a boat that'll take you as, a, as a greenie to get some experience on a yacht and then uh, you go from there. What, what type of person do you feel like succeeds in this industry? Is it just like a hard worker? Is it someone with a great personality? Like when you're looking for crew members for the, the boats, like what are you looking for? To be honest, you've got to have a little bit of everything. You've got to be a hard worker. That's, that's full, you know, that's, that's through every department. You've got to have hard work. Um, and a lot of our job is customer service. So you've got to be good with people and guests. I mean, unless oh, maybe you're like an that. <laughs> I hate working for people. Yeah. <laughs> people have problems like, go figure out your own problem. I don't know how you guys deal with whiny babies, but anyways. Yeah. You got to be good with people. You got to be okay being on your feet for long hours. You know, we've, and kind of just being okay with being away from home and stuff like that. It's not, you know, it's not like the normal life. We're not home a lot. And yeah. Well, describe, to, you know, tell me about the people that want you guys as staff, you know, like you, you, we know who you guys are, but the people that kind of want this kind of a, you know, g g the best staff possible, obviously they're, they're, they come from a, a very wealthy income. How are these people, you know, where do, they, do you know, like, what's their mostly, what's their background mostly? Um, I'd say mostly a business background, um, uh, you know, you get the odd, like, famous person, but hardly any celebrities actually own yachts. It's more business. Um, and I've never had a bad experience, like, with the people that I work for. I've worked for some great people. Um, and it all depends on the kind of yacht you get on. You know, you kind of get these yachts that are more adventure yachts that want to go traveling and see the world. You get some that are just kind of leisure. They just want to do, like, the Med and the Caribbean, which we call, like, the milk runs. And they just want to be seen and shopping and restaurants and things. Um, but you get all, all different kinds of yachts and charter programs. Some are like diving and helicopters and adventures. And some are more chilled. They just want to hang out by a beach and be left alone. <laughs> what, what's the most expensive yacht you've been on to date? Like that they've paid, for, like the price that they've paid for the No, I'm, I'm charter? talking boat i want to know like the most expensive boat you've been on i don't know if i can say that but it's it's up there yeah like 120 million <laughs> close yeah <around laughs> <that. laughs> yeah i mean there but you know like if you could if i could afford it hell yeah i'd have a yacht and i'd be going all over the world you know but well, everyone talks the, about boats being a terrible investment and that, that just like you're just flushing your money down the drain. You can afford you a hundred and twenty million dollar yacht. I don't think you're you worried about it. Endless <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're worried about investments at this point. <laughs> What's the craziest thing you've seen on one of these yachts? Not like parties, but like is there some sort of like water slide or some kind of crazy feature? Like the craziest feature you've seen on a, on one of these yachts. <laughs> Um, I'd say, well, I don't know if it's like the craziest, but you, I mean, you can Google these too, but you know, some of the coolest stuff is the toys that these yachts have. Like, you know, they've got submarines, helicopters, they've got Range Rovers that, you know, we strap down on deck. Um, there's yachts that have like glass bottom interiors so you can see through. Um, there's all kinds of things. 
That's so cool. So when have you're you... working on these yachts, are you able to enjoy yourself a little bit? Like pretend you work 12 hours. Can you say, hey, I want to jump in the water real quick? Or how does that work for you? Uh, um, it, it all depends. It depends on your captain, your program. It depends on, you know, what the guest usage is like. So let's say, like for my, my captain, for instance, I've worked for him now for a couple of years and he's amazing. But um, if we're in the Bahamas and the guests are away on the beach and we've just finished our shift, yeah, he'll let us go for a swim or, you know, kind of get off onto shore to walk around a bit and clear our heads. Like he's all about exercise. So we're, we can go for a run or a swim or whatever on a break. And that's really nice. Now, <laughs> if you have a wild guest that's just out of control and then they realize that they're being taped, do they ever come in and they're like, oh, we need you guys to get rid of this footage because it's going to look really bad for me? Oh, I'm below deck. Um, I'd say, no, they, I've never seen the guests really approach production. I mean, I know that they've tried, like guests all the time will try to hide from production. Yeah. They'll try to like close the door or take their microphone off or try to secretly have a fight, like couples fighting and they're trying to <laughs> quietly do it. And you're like, yeah, no, they can, we can hear you. Everyone can hear you. <laughs> so why would these people want to be on the show? Like what's the benefit for them? Are they getting like a little bit of a break on the price? of using you guys i think they do yeah and you know i i think yeah and they can promote whatever they want to promote so if you have a company you want to promote i mean we've seen like mr skin come on below deck and things like that um and that's the challenging thing for like yachties who are really in the industry because some of these guests you know have never chartered a yacht so it's a little different for us it's different clientele i guess is the way to say it so we should do a Hollywood Raw on the ocean is what you're saying. It could be a good promotion <laughs> for the podcast. We could hang out with you guys. We could be wild and crazy. Exactly. Yeah. All Dex, right. I don't, I don't think we can afford the ocean. And maybe there's a lake somewhere in Nebraska we can fucking do. But I don't think a swimming pool. Yeah, really. Let's be real. There's a pond somewhere in uh, we'll Missouri just, we can maybe afford. We'll just invite uh, Malia the, over. Yeah. What's the craziest party you've seen on one of these boats? Oh, those, yeah, but I mean, how can you say the craziest? They have like the, they have amazing parties like every time they're on. So, <laughs> just, um, but yeah, describe it. Well, parties are one of the things you know. It what blows my mind to this day is for these parties, you might get things just flown in, like Dom Perignon or whatever. We'll be in like really remote places that you can hardly get milk at the store, and yet we're getting like a helicopter dropping off. Dom Perignon and these fine wines and that kind of blows my mind or you'll have like a seaplane come in with groceries and you know fresh lobster and things for this party now, <laughs> or if, just a regular dinner <laughs> yeah if you're working with you know guests that have this much extravagant money then are you expecting your tip at the end to be able to afford like a car Essentially, because if they're if they're flying in groceries, are you not like, all right, give back a little bit. We've been working with you for a while and you got to tip your, your staff. Um, I wouldn't say afford a car, but we get good. We do get tipped well. I mean, what you see on the show is pretty like relative. It's usually about 18 to 20 percent of what your charter cost was. So that depends on the size of the boat. So some boats, you know, they're half a million dollars to charter it for a week. So your tip is very generous. <laughs> you know. That's great. Have you uh, have you ever seen an orgy on the boat? <laughs> like anything going on like sex parties and stuff like that? I, I, I will I say, did not I will, that. yeah, I will say I worked on a boat. I won't say which one, but I worked on a boat and um, we had a on this to go up to the sun deck. We had a little red light and it let crew know that if the red light was on, you couldn't go up onto the sun deck. <laughs> But as the owners got like more and more comfortable with us, they just stopped turning that red light on. And I walk up there and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> wow. You yeah. forgot to turn the light on. So was it just the two of them or was that a party and everyone going? Oh out? no, there's like a bunch of them. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's wild. That's what the that's, Hollywood uh, Raw Yacht's going to look like too. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Dex. Yeah. That's, uh, that's wild. That's uh that's pretty insane. I mean, that's I wouldn't want to do clean up on that deck though. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> yeah. That's when that. we just get the hoses out and just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We just gotta clean that one up. Um, that's pretty wild. Uh you have a new podcast coming out. Tell us about this podcast. 
I do, yeah. Um, it's going to be called The Total Ship Show, and we're just going to talk all things ships. So a lot of stories that I've had with, you know, a, a cool thing about being in this industry is I meet a lot of fascinating, like, captains and engineers and people that just have these wild stories at sea. And uh, I'm a nerd when it comes to those stories, and I thought maybe some other people out there might enjoy it too. <laughs> Dude, people are obsessed with Below Deck. I mean, in full transparency, we've been trying to get – below deck cast members for quite some time because people are so obsessed with the show and your guys' storylines and all kinds of stuff and it took our our network her dad signing you to get this connection <laughs> going so big shout out to her dad um we're excited for your podcast it doesn't debut you, until yeah. the beginning of the year is that correct when does when do we get to hear the first episode of your show yeah probably around the beginning of the year um I'm kind of stuck in France at the moment, so when I can get back and kind of get in the studio, then we'll uh, have something out by the end of the year. Okay, so here's another question. How are you going to keep up the recording? Is this going to be, you're going to do episodes while you're on the yacht, like downstairs, or like, what, what's what's your plan? <laughs> um, I don't really have a plan. I think I'm going to figure that out as we go, but I, I you know, I can, I can get a weekend here or there to go back. <laughs> Sick. That's so fun. I love it. All I right, just we, recorded, um, we just recorded our reunion and I did that in my shower on the yacht during a charter. So <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> all right. We need to get into your scooter accident. This was oh, yeah. a big deal. I saw mm. on social media when you kind of said, hey, I've been in an accident. Thank God I was wearing my helmet. Walk us through mm. what happened. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was. I well okay first off it was a Vespa like a 150 cc Vespa a lot of people asked me if it was like a razor scooter and I was like no I, it was a it's a motorcycle um and we were it, I was with my crew my deck crew that day we had rented these Vespas and we were kind of going all over Palma and uh we were coming back we were close to the boat it was late at night we were going a lot faster than we should have been and um yeah, one of my deck crew members was in front of me and he kind of looked over his shoulder, but not well enough. And he went to the left and he clipped my front tire. Oh. And that, yeah. And we were going 75 miles per hour. Oh, oh dang. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I saw it happening and I was like, oh. Oh, like this is, this is not going to be good. And then yeah. I was laying there in the middle of the road. It was dark. And I just see these cars coming. And luckily, like, adrenaline was pumping through my veins and I just stood up and I ran off the road because I was like they're not going to see me they're not going to stop oh my and then God. yeah there we were <laughs> like everyone's phones were done we were in you know we're in Spain we're trying to get an ambulance we're trying to get me to the hospital but it's good a lot of road rash later and I'm fine but yeah I was gonna say I saw your your photo and your oh. arms were bandaged up your legs were yeah. bandaged up yeah I was gonna say is there any residual scarring on your body from all of this I've got a lot of, yeah, from the road rash, I, fra I fractured my elbow and I broke my toes. But um, <sighs> other than, and then I had road rash everywhere, which was gnarly. But um, it's really just the road rash, trying to get the scars to go away. So is that part of the reason why you can't go home? No, my, my boat actually flew me home to just kind of hang out and uh, recover. So okay. I was home for a while recovering. And then I've just now come back to work just gotcha. a couple weeks ago. Is there going to be yeah. any more Vespa rides in foreign countries or are you hanging up your hat on that one? No, hell yeah. I, mean, I love, I love, I love scooters. I love dirt bikes. I love all things like that. So. Dang, man. That's, I also so have sick. a road bike and that could happen on a road bike too, you know? So. Yeah, but, yeah, I guess so. But 70 miles an hour. I'm just like picturing that. Cause that's so easy. That could happen. Like it's one of those things that's, yeah. Oh, what did the guy, like, what did he, is he, what was his response? He was is fine. He, just... he was able to like save it. Well, then... we know he's fine, but what was his yeah. response to you? <laughs> is he just calling you every day? Like, how does he? How does he oh no, he it? felt bad. He felt terrible. Oh. But I mean, it was my deck crew. So um, we they came over. You know, they. I think I was the calmest. I was like, guys, I'm okay. I'm going into shock. Like, let's just everyone take a deep breath. I'm fine. They were panicking. I was like, oh. it's so, okay. It's okay. We... When they got you to the hospital, how long did the medical staff have to sit there and like pick stones oh. and debris out of your skin? 
honestly, that was the worst part. The poor woman, like I speak broken Spanish. She was speaking broken English. And basically she brought this tub in and she's like, I'm so sorry. This is going to hurt. And I was like, what, what's going on? And she just takes this sponge and like this brush and she just starts scrubbing all of my, and like, I, you saw the bandages. I had wounds that were like massive and she, it was pure iodine. And I just started screaming and she gave me a popsicle stick to like bite down on. And I was like, no, please stop. There's no better way to do it. They couldn't drug you up first. That was the other thing. They didn't give me any pain medication. And I was like, why? Please give me pain medication. She's like, we can't yet. Because we have, to, they had to do scans and everything, you know, which I understand. But it was, yeah. Was there any long term like infections that you got from it that you had to get under control or anything? No, no infections or nothing. Um, I do, I was concussed pretty badly, but uh, nothing long term. Well, I don't think. We'll and sorry, one other question Did you land on the road like <laughs> asphalt or on like gravel, like on the side of the road? Uh, it was like asphalt, but there was a patch of gravel that my friend had like tried to swerve. So there was loose gravel in it, but it was asphalt. And I just kind of flit. I like flew and just my body just did a bunch of barrel rolls on the asphalt. And I just, it's it's really amazing. Yeah. You didn't break more parts of your body. Like if you're flipping yeah. around like that, it's pretty unbelievable. Yeah. My helmet had a crack all the way down the middle. Like it was split and my face, luckily I had a face shield. So, um, the, but pieces of plastic from the face shield were in like my eyebrow and things, but. Oh my God. That I'm good. Rough. Good that now. <laughs> so we know that the show has this insane fan base. Who is the biggest celebrity that's reached out to you that kind of left you starstruck? Someone maybe slid in your DMS and said, I'm a huge fan that was like, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> um this happened just recently actually i don't really want to name drop but um she yeah i got a message from a pretty big namer and i was like come on she, drop she, the name it's okay. no i can't i can't but <clears throat> i didn't know that i could filter message requests so she had actually sent me it in like september and i didn't know and i only just responded like two days ago i was like oh hey um <laughs> also a big fan but i didn't know you sent me a message like months ago <laughs> Wow. Are we talking, wait, are we talking actress, singer? Actress, model. Oh, gotcha. That's really cool. So Emrata, tell us about her. Uh, <laughs> she was a huge fan. And uh, you got... <laughs> I think another cool one was Chrissy Teigen put on, like, you know, she tweeted. She was like, oh, Amelia is such a badass. And I was like, wow, this is so weird that, like, celebrities know my name or who I am. Yeah. It's so yeah, I think a lot of celebrities watch the show now, which is cool. So on that note, do you watch any other Bravo shows or is there any other Bravo celebrities that you're obsessed with personally? If I'm honest, I don't watch any other Bravo shows and I'm not a huge, I don't know that I, you know, I'm not a huge like celebrity fangirl, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I would do if Adam, I saw a famous person. I'd probably just be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Adam, who else told us they were on a Bravo show and they were like, ah, I don't really watch any other ones. Was it Leah McSweeney? Might have been her, but Leah's been in the game for a while. Like she's cool. Like she's a New Yorker. Like she's. Was it she's maybe it was like Dorinda? Like, was it Dorinda? It could be Dorinda. I think I it was think Dorinda. Was like, yeah, I don't listen. <laughs> I don't watch it. Yeah. Like show. I've met a bunch of other Below Deck cast members, and I didn't know they were on Below Deck. Like they were like, oh hey, Malia, and I was like, hey, and they're like, no, it's me, and I was like, cool, it's <laughs> me also. <laughs> And then they're like, oh, and my friends are like, dude, that's so and so from like sailing season. I was like, oh, cool. Hey. <laughs> that's so, so funny. Dax, uh, we want to play a game with you, Malia. And uh, Dax, okay. tell us about this game. All right. So this is a new game for us, but we're really excited. It's called Cap or Fact. All right. So we're going to read off some of these headlines that are circulating around the world. You let us know if it's Cap or Fact because there's so much, you know, listen, we've been in the entertainment industry for years and years and years. And there's a lot of stuff that I see and I'm like, there is no way that's true. And it's just people trying to get headlines. So we're going to read off headlines. You let us know. Okay. All right. And okay. You, we all know what cat means, right? We're all cool. We're all hip. <clears throat> and no, I don't actually. So, I, mean, I, knew that, that, I knew that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a lie. Cat means lie. That's what all the TikTokers are saying now. So that's cat, what we, like C-A-T. Cat. 
C-A-P. So ha- cap like a cap. Oh, okay. I thought you I thought we were playing like captain or fact. I was like, okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. cap is a lie, fact is a fact. It's true. Right. Okay. You just say lie, it's the same amount of letters. <laughs> I know, but it's so it's okay. a cool. We gotta be cool. We gotta be, we gotta cool, be cool, you know. Okay, right. We're, we're All right, so we'll work on that. <laughs> All right, Malia, cap or fact. Daily Express did a story, a headline that said, Below Deck Mediterranean, is Malia White dating one of her co-stars? Question mark. That is the headline. Cap or fact? Cap. So you're not dating anyone. Well, there's a technical thing there. He's not a co-star. Oh! So you, well, you, are, you, are, you are dating Jack, though, correct? Jake. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jake. I don't know who. I, I don't know. No, Jake. not Jack. Jake, you are Jake dating Baker. Jake, correct? Yes. Okay, but and so he's not a he's not a co-star. He's the engineer, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so how did that come out? Like, how did that come to be? Did he make the first um, one to you, or like how did it go down? He did make the first. Well, he he gave me a book to read, and I was like, oh, he reads books. That's good. Book? <laughs> That's a good sign. Um, yeah. the blue mind. Okay. It's really good. It's all about how the water and the ocean kind of changes you. Um, yeah, so that was good. And then we had to fix a jet ski once together, and that was fun. We chatted a bunch. But honestly, nothing really happened until after filming was done, and we kind of got to hang out away from cameras. And, yeah. Is and it, we kind of – his boat and my boat were both in the Caribbean, and we got to hang out some more then. So, yeah. So is it hard – like, I'm assuming it affects your <laughs> love life being on – long distance yachts all the time so if you're not dating yeah. either a member of the boat or a co-star like you're probably not having much of a love life right right exactly i mean every yachty has tinder because whatever port you go into you know um but uh it's bad um <laughs> <laughs> that was That's very real life phrase. i mean <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we and then dating, you know, it's hard to date someone not in the industry or because, yeah, you work long hours, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're on a boat with a bunch of people. It's it's tough unless you're so on rotation, then that, that works. How serious is this relationship? Are you guys have you met each other's families? It's uh, are you officially boyfriend, girlfriend is how serious um, is it? You know, I don't know. It's hard to t- we're we're on separate boats at the moment, so we'll see. Like if we can get on the same boat, it might be different. But it's just he's met some of my family. Yeah. Do do any of the I, I guess I, I want to say your co-stars or anyone. Do you guys ever hook up with people that are guests on the boat? And I'm not saying you necessarily. I'm just saying is that like a common thing? Like people could potentially hook yeah. up with a a guest. No, it's not common. No. And it's very frowned upon. And that's kind of like a, a line you don't want to cross when you're a crew oh, member. I, didn't I have heard that. stories of like, you know, stewardesses who have worked on the boat for long periods of time and owners like falling in love. That's happened. That's very, very rare, but it's happened. Um, but no, it's not. It's very. It, you don't do that. Okay. And can you confirm or deny that Jake doesn't actually go by Jack. <laughs> he, he goes by Jake. <laughs> I don't think he'd like it if I called him Jack. <laughs> he'd be like, "Who's Jack?" All right. Capper fact: bosses forced to step in during wild Lexi Wilson fight. Bosses. Uh, yeah, the the yeah the production fact fact yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah, Definitely. she she crossed the line. She was she got physical and then they uh, jump we, in. Yeah. Now is production. this, but this is production, or this is literally whoever's manning the boat. Is it, you know, is it everyone jumping in, or just production? It was production at that point. It was that night that we're all in the crew mess, and everyone's kind of like going at it, and we're trying to get her to just like go to bed, and then she started shoving Z, and she started getting physical and like throwing arms, and then production just came in and was like, "Right, everyone go to bed." So. Wow. All right. Next one, Capper Fact. Metro put out this headline that says, Below Deck Mediterranean, Matthew Brand Sandy, one of the worst captains in reunion. Fact, he did do that, yes. Fact. And why? Captain Sandy and Matthew did not get along very well. Um, I don't think she liked that he quit and came back. And I don't think he liked the way that she spoke to him sometimes. So it was kind of a brutal uh, work relationship. Interesting. All right. 
All right. This one came from Bravo TV's website. Uh, Captain Sandy Yawn recalls the most volatile crew experience she's been on below deck Mediterranean. Is it? Is it uh, yeah. Probably Lexi. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got one last one here for you. Capper fact. We're doing headlines from around the world, different uh, publications. This one comes from Daily Express. Is Hannah returning to below deck Mediterranean? Question mark. Cap or fact? Is Hannah returning? I have no idea. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Rumors <laughs> I'm the wrong going person to ask. There. <laughs> there's a lot of rumors. I don't, yeah, last time I yeah I haven't really talked to Hannah about it, but um, I'd say I have no idea. Okay, this is going to lead us into our next little game here. It's called Rate Your Co-Star. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to get into what it's like working with some of these people, because, you know, when I was on on TMZ, people would think, oh, these, these people are the best friends. And if I rated them, I might have rated them differently than what you see on TV. <laughs> okay. Adam, I, yeah. Adam, I would have given a four on TMZ. <laughs> I was about to say, what are you doing? Man? <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. One to ten rate Captain Sandy. Nine. Cool. All right. Uh, Hannah. Six. Colin. I've never worked with Colin. Never worked with Colin? But he's a great guy. I really like Colin. I'd give him like a 10. He's so Ooh. nice. All right. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, Christine. Oh, Bugsy? Yeah. Uh, I'd give Bugsy an eight. All right. What about... Maybe not a co-star, but someone you work with, Jake. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, how about Lexi Wilson? Oof, I'd say a four, hard four. Ooh, hard four for Lexi. All mm -hmm. right, well, that was fun. That was the first time we played Rate Your Coworker. That was fun. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you, Adam, do you have any other following questions? Because yeah, this has no. been really fun. Uh, I know I enjoy this. It's uh, you have an interesting gig. So it's like one of those things where I'm just mm. more interested in your lifestyle and your job. It's one of those things where I, I, it's it's there's only so many. I understand why you're kind of dating another person that's in your industry, because like you two are on the same page a little bit. You they, you understand each other's types of lives. Um, yeah. What is your my, my last question for you is just what's your end goal? Like, I know you'd be captain, but is your more long term? Are you trying to get more into reality TV or more have your own show? Like, what is your end goal? That's a good question. No, really. I think I don't think I ever thought it could be anything but yachting, like in the short term. And then with this season of Below Deck, I think my following has grown quite a bit, and kind of more opportunities that have presented themselves. And see, so yeah, I don't know. I think if the show wants me to continue, I, I would. Um, I love yachting, though. I still want to have a career in it. Um, but then, yeah, maybe see what other doors open as I go along. What, what was the moment that you came back to like the US and you realized, oh, damn, I'm actually really popular here. People are recognizing me when I'm walking down the street. Like, what was that moment like? I love hearing these like insta famous stories because for a lot of people, they are on a reality show. The reality show is huge. And then all of a sudden, they're thrust into this like new fame. Yeah, it definitely took me a minute to get used to, and my family as well, But because um, my mom kind of lives in Florida now. So I think one moment I was in Publix, and I was in, like, the cracker section, and I just hear this screaming, and I look over, and I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? There's an emergency, and this woman's just coming towards me, but, like, screaming, and I was like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? And she's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, heading some crackers <laughs> what, are you, like, what are you doing here uh and then it, it took me a minute to like clock it and I was like oh shit like you watch below deck <laughs> and, uh, yeah so I don't know it's taken me a minute um I thought with the brown hair I wouldn't be as recognizable but apparently it's my voice so uh, I don't know what that says about me <laughs> how many people come up to you and are like why do I know you where do I know you from oh I love that because I never help them they're like oh where do I know you from? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and I had the best one is recently I had this girl, she's, she's a little drunk, but she came up to me at a bar and she's like, has anyone ever told you you look like Malia from below deck? And I was like, you know, I get that a lot. And she's like, you look just like her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I eventually told her and we took a photo together, but yeah, I love not helping people. <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. Yeah. Well, Malia, thank you for coming on the show. Make sure you guys uh, get ready for her podcast coming out next year, very soon next year, the ship show. I'm excited for that. Make sure you follow her on Instagram. She's a fun follow. Uh, it's exciting <laughs> to see where in the world she is. Uh, but it's glad to see you doing well, especially after the accident. You're and you're in a happy place, especially with this new guy in your life. It's very cool. It's very exciting stuff going on. Yeah, thanks, guys, and thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. No problem. Okay, before we go, who was it that jo dropped into your DMs? <laughs> uh, well, maybe, maybe we'll see. We might be hanging out soon, so you'll you'll see. <laughs> All righty. I love it. Well, thank you, Malia. We really do appreciate it. You're a busy lady, but being over there, um, you know. Keep working hard, and we'll keep watching the show. Sounds good. See you guys. That was fun. That was really fun. I So here's the thing. I, I wasn't lying when I, when I told her that we have tried to get numerous stars of Below Deck for quite some time. Like, they are guarded. I, and I don't know if it's because they're busy and they're just always around the world or what, but, like, we can never get anyone. Yeah, bravo. It's been a little bit tough to kind of get a hold of to start giving us some other people. But of all the shows we've had, the Housewives, we've had the other shows on, we've had, uh, but we couldn't get, you know, but it's also these people are not like in America, like they're all over the world. So they're yep. hard to get a hold of, um, you know, as we, you know, she and she's, you know, she's a big star on the show. It's she's pretty huge. cool to talk to her. She's yeah, huge. yeah. Like we got one of the big ones. That's the cool part. Like. Not only did it take us forever to get a below deck star, but we got like a legit one of the star stars of the show. So that's cool. I'm excited for a podcast. Like we said earlier, it's going to be on Herd At, which is our network here. Um, so you'll have to listen to Total Ship Show once it comes out at the beginning of the year. But uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people are excited to to hear her doing a, a yeah. show. And we got some really huge guests coming up on the uh, the podcast the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's uh, it's exciting. It's really uh, – it's, well, it's actually growing. really cool. We've been growing. And you know what? A lot of it is thanks to people leaving reviews and stuff, and we appreciate that. So uh, continue to ask you to please, if you haven't gone and left a review on uh, iTunes, just scroll down to the bottom, leave five-star review, then like a little comment, these guys are awesome or we suck or whatever. But just leave the five stars is the most important part. Yes, and uh, we're on TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're on it all. Follow us on all social media platforms. We got a fun account uh, going on right now. It's uh, it's really cool to stay up to date with uh, what's going on in the Hollywood world. Uh, you can find me at, at Adam Glynn, G-L-Y-N. You can find Dax Holt at D-A-X-H-O-L-T. We'll see you guys next time.